Okay. Hey, it's John and Mike from Brew-Dudes.com, and uh, we got the, uh, I guess these are the water analysis report back from Ward Labs. Uh, we sent these off. Mike sent these off. I, I took a, a, a sample from my uh, inline RV filter, which uh, we put into a nice little plastic bottle, and then he took one right off his tap. We sent it to Ward Labs. We get the results back. And the question I have for you, Michael, now is, what do we do with this? What are, you know, now that, you know, if if I'm a brewer out there in TV land and uh, I've taken the step to get my water tested and, and I have this report back in my hand, what do I do with it? Well, the first thing is to try to not get overwhelmed because water chemistry okay. is difficult even for chemists. Okay. Um, water chemistry can be very tricky, but the first thing that I do when I looked at this was, um, what are the key minerals that I've heard about that I want to look for? Okay. And so I went right down that list and the first four things that I really wanted to see was the sodium and the calcium levels, then also the sulfate and the chloride levels. Okay. And uh, what did you find in terms of the, the, the parts per million that uh, came back in our results? Well, interestingly enough, in this report, um, I knew that we had really soft water here, mm -hmm. but um, I was blown away that basically, functionally, our sulfate level is coming out at 6 ppm. Okay. So sulfate is, low. is basically zero, okay. almost. <laughs> uh, our calcium level is at 34 ppm, so that's a pretty low number, too. Um, the only thing that, the one thing I was a little bit concerned with is that our sodium and our chloride, and those things will tend to sort of travel together, um, it's kind of high. Our chloride level is 250 ppm and sodium is 134 ppm. Okay, you're saying, and, you're saying high and low. Um, what, what are, where can someone find like the proper range for these, uh, these mineral amounts in the water? Right, so if you look in like uh, Palmer's How to Brew and his water chemistry section, uh -huh. uh, he does a nice job of having a table out there talking about each ion specifically. Okay. Uh, the cations, which are your sodium, your, your calcium, your magnesium, and then also your anions, which are your negatively charged ions like uh, chloride and sulfate. So he does it, but any, any brewing tone that you have um, has got this stuff in there. We all have many books, brewing books probably, and they're all listed in there. Okay. Um, you can also look at different levels that are available um, all over the world, right? You can look at Pilsen, you can look at Dublin, you can look sure. at, you know, so, so you can get a sense of what's going on in the rest of the world. Okay, so you're saying our sodium's high, our uh, chloride's high, yeah. and uh, our, our uh, calcium's low, and uh, the sulfate's low. What do you think this met, has meant to our beers that we've brewed so far? Well, interestingly enough, I mean, I'm a, I'm a multi-beer brewer, Yeah. Um, but I do like to brew every fourth or fifth beer, something hoppy, sure. just to keep the palate happy, right? Uh -huh. um, hoppy. But the funny thing is, with such a low sulfate level, whenever I've brewed a hoppy beer, I've always focused on late additions, because mm -hmm. I love a big hoppy nose and aroma. Sure. But I can definitely say that any beer that we've made, that the bittering charges are always just kind of in the background. And I think that we really struggle to actually have bitter beer. Yeah. Um, in all of the other beer that I brew, brown ales and stouts and some of the lagers we've done, mm -hmm are super malty and super tasty. And you know why that is? It's because that's, that chloride level is so high. Okay. And because chloride tends to enhance the flavor of Malt. things. Okay. Just like putting uh, salt in soup, yep. having a high chloride level in your, in your beer is going to promote all those malty flavors. And the low sulfate okay. is going to diminish the hoppy flavors. So you could say that if somebody has water that's uh, low in uh, chloride, and high in sulfate, they probably would have more success with hoppy beers. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, what, what Palmer always talks about, and I've heard Jamil talk about, is it's really about your chloride to sulfate okay. ratio. Yeah. Not so much the absolute numbers, yeah. but the ratio. Okay. And our chloride to sulfate ratio is basically <laughs> 200 to 1, yeah, yeah. which it's supposed to be close. If you do like a 2 to 1 yeah. of chloride to sulfate, that's more malty, or 1 to 2 chloride to sulfate, that's more hoppy. Okay. So I'm guessing the, the last question I have is, what's the plan? How do we play with this to uh, make excellent beer, from going from good beer to excellent beer? The plan is we just start making wine. Oh, great. Um, no, the plan is, that's another video. Okay. Because you know what? Water, water chemistry is tough. We just got the report. Yep. I'm excited about it. It really lends some insight into how our beers have been tasting and okay. stuff up to this point. Um, but there's some interesting stuff to maybe do here moving forward. I think we need to digest it more. I'm 
I've talked about how certain ions affect the flavor of beer, but on this report too, there's the stuff that affects the, the pH of your beer, the pH of your mash. We right. haven't even touched that yet. Nice. So, so maybe two more videos. Two more that. videos. Nice. Stay tuned. We'll keep talking about this. So for John and Mike, uh, brew on and hopefully with better water chemistry. Yeah, with better living through chemistry. That's, that's right. Thanks. Cheers.